In this tutorial, we'll take a look at uh, how to draw tree diagrams and then also how to use them to calculate some probabilities. And what tree diagrams are is they're a graphical way to organize usually multi-stage events. I suppose you could you could model a single stage event with a tree diagram, but it's usually used when there's two or more stages. And we're going to take a look at two examples, one on this page, one the next. And the first one says that Sam tosses a normal six-sided die with one, two, three, four, five, six on it, and then flips a coin, a normal coin with a head and a tail. And it's supposed to draw a tree diagram and then use it to calculate these three probabilities. And so let's say that uh, he throws the six-sided die first. So it's, it's really like this is the beginning. And so the first stage here is throwing the die. So the die he could get a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or 6. So that level across, that represents the first stage. So for example, this one here is the event that he rolled a 3. This one here is that he rolled a 5. And then after each one of those in the next stage below, uh, when you flip a coin, there's two possibilities, normally a head and a tail. So uh, we would put a head and a tail by each one of these. So for example, this means that he got a one on the, co on the uh, die and then he got a head on the coin. And this would mean right here that he got a one with the dice and a tail with the coin. And so this stage here represents the flipping of the coin. So as I said just a moment ago, that's the event there that he got a one and a head. And this one would be he got a one on the die and then a tail. And then over here would be the event that he got a two and a head, and then a two and a tail, and then so on throughout the entire. Uh, this is actually called the sample space. It lists every possible outcome uh, that could you could get, and uh, there are twelve of them. Uh, you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. If you use the fundamental counting principle, if you know that, uh, there's uh, six ways to throw the die and two ways to throw the coin. So six times two gives you twelve. Okay, so that's another reason that there's twelve. So that's how you draw a tree diagram to simulate this experiment. So for to calculate the, the probability that uh, Sam got an even number and he got ahead when he uh, threw the coin. Um, an even number in head could be a 2 and an H, or he could have gotten a 4 and an H, or he could have gotten a 6 and an, a head. So those are the only three possibilities that include getting an even number and also a head on the coin. And so there's three of them out of the 12 possibilities in the sample space. So he has three chances in 12 of that happening. Now it's a good idea always to reduce fractions so that would reduce to a quarter. So he has a quarter or a 25% chance of uh, getting an even number and a head. For the second one here, uh, what's the probability of getting a number less than three and a tail? So let's get rid of those. So less than three and a tail. So for example, this one would be less than three and a tail. Uh, a two and a tail would be a number less than three and a tail. And that's it. That's the only possibilities. Uh, this one, you wouldn't include that because it's less than three, but it's not a tail. Same with this one. It's less than three, but it's not a tail. And then all these other ones over here are numbers that are not less than three. Uh, three itself, remember, is not less than three. If you said less than or equal to, then we could include that, but uh, that's not what the question asked. So there's only two chances out of 12. Uh, which reduces to one chances in six, so approximately a 17% chance of that occurring. In C, uh, it asks, what's the probability of getting a number greater than three or a tail? Now, there's a difference between and and or. And means that both of those have to happen, both of these have to happen, an even number and also a head. Or means that he either in the role has a number greater than three or he has a tail. So let's get rid of those uh, ones from the last one. So which ones would that be? Well, a number greater than three would be all of these, because this says just greater than three. This part is not referring to whether it's a tail or not. Or a tail, so you would have to include all of those. Or a tail would also include this one, and this one, and this one. So the or includes uh, the first thing Okay, happening anyway, okay, uh, and also the second. 
Okay, so it's not like they both have to happen at the same time. Or means either this is happening greater than three, or there's a tail happening. And so a two and a tail uh, satisfies this uh, characteristic on the end. It really doesn't matter that the two is, is, uh, isn't greater than three. Uh, so or includes all of these and all of these. So if you count these up, there's actually nine of them. And so he has a 9 chance in 12 of that happening, which would reduce to 3 quarters if you divide both of them by 3. So that's the first example. In the second one, I want to show um, um, a, a little bit more complex example. So this is a two dice, a two normal six-sided dice a roll tree diagram. So this stage across the top here is the first roll. So we could get a, a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And then after that, we, well, either roll the same dice again or a second dice. It really doesn't matter. That's, it looks exactly the same. And so uh, after each one of these, you would have six more branches. And so there's six ways to throw the first dice and six ways to throw the second. So there's six times six or 36 different possibilities. And all those possibilities are listed down here. So, for example, this event right here is getting a one in the first roll and a one in the second. Uh, this event right here is getting a 3 in the first roll and a 1 in the second. This is getting a 3 in the first roll and a 5 in the second. So every single one is listed as an ordered pair here. Uh, getting two fives in a row would be this one right here. So we're asked to determine each probability. There's five different ones here that are asked. Uh, the first one, A, says the probability that both numbers are less than 3. Uh, I'm abbreviating here. I didn't put the R in there, but I just want to make it a little shorter. So both numbers are less than 3. Well, which ones would that be? Both numbers are less than 3. So if you look here, both numbers are less than 3 would include this one and this one, not the 1, 3. Okay. Uh, both numbers less than 3 would include this one and this one, but uh, none of those because all of a sudden we get numbers bigger than 3. And of course, all of this all of these are uh, at least one of the numbers is bigger than three. So there's only actually four possibilities out of all those 36 rules that both numbers are less than three. So it would be four out of 36 and if you uh, divide four into both of those that reduces to one ninth. So there's a one in nine chance that the both numbers are less than three. Uh, second one, uh, probably that the sum of the numbers is 6. Well, so we just look and see how many of them have a sum of 6. Well, 1 and 5 has a sum of 6. 2 and 4 has a sum of 6. 3 and 3 would have a sum of 6. 4 and 2 would have a sum of 6. Now, 4 and 2, 2 and 4 is not the same role. Okay, uh, the 2, 4 means you got 2 in the first and 4 in the second. The 4, 2 actually means you got 4 in the first and 2 in the second. They might look the same when they look at them at the table if you happen to be rolling them at the same time, but they are actually two different rolls. And then we have the 5 and the 1 add to 6, and everything else is bigger than 6. See the 6, 1 here is that adds to 7, adds to 8, adds to 9, so there's no adding to 6 over there. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, different roles that add to 6, a sum of 6. So you'd have a 5 uh, out of 36 chance of that happening. For C, uh, the probability the sum of the numbers is greater than 7. Well, how many are greater than 7? So, uh, greater than 7, you see 1 and 6 add to 7. So nothing in the first, on the left here, in the first branch, is uh, greater than 7 at all. But uh, you see, we start right here. 2 and 6 is greater than 7. And the next one, now 3 and 4 add to 7. So we'd be including those two rolls. And in the middle here, 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, that's all 7 or less. But uh, that's greater than 7. And then, okay, 5 and 1, 5 and 2 is, uh, is 7 or less. But this would all be greater than 7. And not 6 and 1, but everything else over here would, would be greater than, a sum of greater than 7. So, 
If we add all this up, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there's 15 numbers all together, 15 chance to the 36 of that happening, and that will reduce because 3 divides into both of those to give us 5 over 12. So the chance, uh, the probability that the sum of the numbers is greater than 7 would be 5 out of 12. Almost 50%, but not quite. Okay, so let's go to uh, doubles. Doubles means that the two numbers are the same. So, uh, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 3, and 3, 4, and 4, 5, and 5, and then 6, and 6 in the end. So there's, there are 6 of them all together. So the chance of that happening is 6 of the 36, which reduces to 1 6. So it's 1 to 6 chance of getting doubles. And the last one, the probability of the sum is greater than 2. Well, how many of those are? There's actually a lot of those. The sum is greater than 2. The sum is greater than 2 would actually include all of this. And see, all of these pairs of numbers would add to more than 2. This would add to more than 2, so would this, this, and this. So if you add those up, there's actually 6 here, 6 here, 6 here, 6 here, 6 here, and 5 here. That adds to 35. So there would be a 35 and 36 chance of that happening. Now the reason I did that last example is because sometimes when you're including almost everything, it can be fairly complicated or long to add it all up. It really wasn't that bad here. But um, all the probabilities all together, all these probabilities that you calculate individually would add to 1 or 100% if you're thinking in percents. So another way to do E here uh, is you could, because a sum of 2 is only one possibility, and then you could actually calculate this by saying it's 1, which is the whole, minus the probability the sum is 2. Okay, so this is greater than 2. So this is kind of, this is the sum is not 2. Uh, the probability the sum is 2. And uh, the probability of sum of 2 would just be this, probably this one single event. Okay, so there's only one way of a sum of 2 happening. So there's one chance in 36. And if you subtract, uh, 1 is the same as 36, 36. So subtract 1, 36, and you get the same 35 over 36. So sometimes... When you're calculating like, just one very small minor event, it's easier rather than counting, uh, sorry, one large event. It's easier than counting everything up to do one minus the probability of it not happening. And that's what this actually is here. And that's the end of the tutorial.